I don't think I'm exaggerating to say that this is probably the most important podcast I've produced. Uh, I'm giving an awful lot away in this podcast, so hopefully it will help people. The title Baby Brain is, uh, well it may strike you as being an odd title, but that is essentially where most of us are. (laughs) Our real, our real brain, our real um, being is still a baby. By the age of five or six, maybe a little bit later, but thereabouts, uh, you've been beaten up by life enough for your real brain, your subconscious, to go into hiding. And it goes into hiding to protect itself. It doesn't want any more beating up. It doesn't want to be told any more that it can't have, that it's naughty, that it's a bad person or whatever happens to a particular child up to that kind of age. And so it closes down, doesn't want to hear any more. And not only that, by the time the child is five or six, it's, you know, it's having to deal with life. And as I've said in many podcasts, the primary driver within us is the drive to survive. So we become involved in that whole effort to continue with our existence. And our everyday conscious mind, which is a thing that thinks and reasons and is awake for 18 hours a day, is almost wholly devoted to that act of survival. So even at the age of five or six, you spend a good part of your day at school learning stuff then playing with your mates and learning who's stronger than you, who's weaker than you, how to suck up to the people who are stronger and all that kind of stuff. It's all survival stuff and we start learning it at a fairly early age and we we become fully consumed with it. And most people when they get to the age of 60 or 70 are still consumed with it. (laughs) Um, The survival drive is a tyrant. And along with it, of course, goes a sexual drive, which um, ensures that there's another generation to do the whole damn thing again. So, we have our subconscious, which by the age of five or six has gone into hiding. It's our real feelings. You can always tell what the subconscious is doing by your emotions. And then we have the conscious mind, which is you know strutting about all over the place telling people it's clever it's great it's strong whatever is needed to survive in this life that's what the conscious mind busies itself with but um, the result is that the subconscious is complaining all the time we don't listen to it but it's complaining it's saying I'm frightened I'm angry I'm insecure. And the baby, the baby brain, is all of those things. It is frightened. It is angry. It is insecure. And it's crying all the time. We don't listen to it because we don't want to listen to it in the first place because we're busy with life. And secondly, we don't know what to do with that anyway. Who wants to sit listening to a crying baby? It's the shrillest sound on earth. Who wants to listen to that? So our conscious mind pays almost no attention to the subconscious. It's, our conscious mind is basically a slave to our survival instinct. And as far as nature is concerned, it really doesn't give a damn whether you listen to your baby or not, as long as you fulfill the need to generate uh, the next um, generation of uh, people who can do the same thing it really doesn't care so you have to find shelter food enough money enough health to raise the next generation and then by the time you get to 50 or 60 when you've done all of that life basically throws you on the scrap heap Uh, your health degenerates and you eventually you die so the task of the conscious mind isn't actually really to do the survival stuff. It has to do that stuff. 
but that isn't the real task. The real task of the conscious mind is to educate the baby, the subconscious mind. How does it do that? Because your baby will not give you peace until you have done that. Your baby will keep screaming. You will feel frightened. You will be angry. You will feel insecure. You will hate people. You will love the wrong people. Whatever it, you know, whatever it is that goes on in your life. Your baby will scream and scream and scream until it's told about the realities of life. Now, when I say told, it sounds like we might um, say in our minds, <laughs> this is all the positive affirmation crap, um, oh, everything's going to be fine, no need to worry. <laughs> that does nothing for the baby, because you're not listening to the baby. The baby's actually saying, I'm frightened. And those feelings are in your body. I'm talking about the subconscious mind, but really your subconscious mind manifests through the body. So if you're anxious, and most people are anxious, then that's your baby speaking to you, saying, I'm frightened, or I'm angry, or whatever. So you have to be in touch with your body, and I'll say more about that at the end. But you need to listen to your baby, and listening to your baby means listening to your body. Yeah, people, almost to a man and woman that I speak to, always start off, when I say, what do you want? They always say the same thing, we, I want peace. That's what most people want, inner peace. And yet what they have within them is a screaming baby. So if we can satisfy the baby, make the baby happy, then we get inner peace. It's as simple as that. Meditation is not going to bring you inner peace. It might do for 10 to 15 minutes. But then when you go back into the world and you know you find that the dog's had a shit, shit on your brand new Persian carpet, then you're not going to feel all that peaceful. And besides which, the baby starts crying again as soon as you come out of your meditation state. So the job of the conscious mind, just to summarize that, is to educate the baby. First of all, it has to listen to the baby. And that means listening to your body. And then it has to explain to the baby why it's behaving and why it's feeling the way it's feeling. Because actually the baby is not stupid. If you tell it something that is true, it knows that it's true. That is one of the characteristics of the baby. It knows what is true. So telling your baby that everything's fine, um, we're going to have such a wonderful day today, blah, blah, blah. The baby knows that isn't true. It knows everything is not fine. It knows that you probably won't have a wonderful day today. And it knows that you're pretending. And what's more, you're not listening to the baby. So... <coughs> You know, here's um, maybe a few ways that we can listen to the baby. So, one of the main problems for the baby is that it knows it's going to die. And it knows that life is full of dangers. It knows that. And that's why many people get stuck on that particular theme. Oh my God, death. Oh my God, the world's such a dangerous place. Well, the baby needs to be told things in the way that they are. We are finite creatures. We are mortal. We will die. And this is the way the universe is made. And there's no getting around it. As soon as you offer up a palliative to your baby... It won't believe you. So if you say, well, we're all going to die, but we can be happy meanwhile, your baby will think, oh, that's a pile of shit. It knows that's not true. And that is the interesting thing about the baby. It kind of knows what is, what is right and what is wrong when you're trying to bullshit it. So if you tell it, if you can feel that 
anxiety in your body and just say oh well you know, I'm feeling this or you're feeling this because you're anxious about your mortality well guess what you are going to die <laughs> you have to give it the brutal facts you are going to die you are insignificant in a hundred years from now it will be as though you had not existed you mean nothing actually that kind of message to the baby can give it a huge sense of relief because one of the things about the baby is that because it feels so insecure and inadequate it pumps itself up and that pumping up is itself an anxiety so to tell it actually you mean fuck all <laughs> is a message that the baby will welcome and this is the bizarre thing about so-called religious and spiritual practices that um, you know you go to I don't know any one of the sort of fashionable Indian gurus or the likes of Tala or whoever and they're going to tell you nice things and guess what the baby doesn't believe it it doesn't believe it because it's not true and all these people and there are millions of them who you know, pursue positive thinking or uh, being mindful or and I'll get onto all of that in a moment all that kind of thing that is doing nothing for their baby their baby is learning nothing with those kind of practices the baby needs to learn the truth and actually wants to know the truth so um, if your baby is angry you need to feel that anger what is it that's making this baby angry well maybe it wants and it's not getting and so the baby needs to be told that actually it is just a very very small thing and the universe is much much larger than it and so most of the things that it wants it will not be able to get just because of circumstances when people adopt a variety of methods to try and reach peace they are in actual fact making matters worse let me give you a few, a few examples so remember your baby by the age of five or thereabouts has been beaten up enough that it just goes into a corner and hides away so what do you do you go to some spiritual guru and um, they give you some new modes of behavior that you need to adopt so you should exercise loving kindness the baby doesn't want to do fucking loving kindness the baby's beaten up and frightened doesn't want to go to the effort of doing loving kindness so all that we're doing again through being told practice loving kindness is we're beating the baby up even more we're saying your behavior isn't adequate you need to change it so that it is more adequate and the baby doesn't want to hear that the baby actually wants relief from all that kind of stuff he wants to be told actually you know, even though you're shit scared, even though you're angry and all the rest of it, that's fine. You know, that's just the way it is. And if you want to understand why you're angry, then you need to understand that you're a very small thing in a very large world and you're not going to get what you want all the time. And actually you're mortal. And in the big scheme of things, you're as nothing. The baby will respond to that kind of thing. And it's uh, an interesting thing that many people who read Schopenhauer, for example, and Schopenhauer is um, profiled as a pessimist philosopher, but many people say when they read Schopenhauer, they get comfort from it. You know, Schopenhauer says things like, our life is driven by pain, by want. All we are doing all the way through life is servicing these desires. And if we can't get them serviced, we have pain. And the whole thing is driven by pain. And yet people read that and they have a sense of relief in reading it. Why do they have a sense of relief? Because it's true. The baby knows that it's true. 
So anyway, I was talking about adopting various practices. So, you know, being mindful. Oh my God, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Obviously you do it because you believe it's going to lead to some kind of um, improved state, greater happiness, greater peace or whatever. It isn't. You're just telling uh, the, uh, you're just giving the baby another way it has to behave. Don't be mindful. Be unmindful. <laughs> be deliberately unmindful. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's mindfulness. There's adopting some kind of uh, mandate from your spiritual guru. There's maybe religion. You know, we should be kind and we should be generous and don't do it. The baby doesn't want to hear all that stuff. The baby's stressed enough without you loading a whole pile of other stuff on the top of it. Here's the magical thing. And it is magical and I'm speaking from personal experience here and the experience of others. If you can educate your baby, which is what this is all about, eventually you don't have to do anything. You don't have to become loving and kind. You don't have to become generous. You don't have to do mindfulness. If you can educate your baby, and that means listening to it and responding to its state, if you can educate it, then the baby will calm down on its own. You don't have to do anything. The baby becomes peaceful becomes happy. So, I did do a podcast um, ages ago called something like uh, Do Not Adjust Any Settings or something. It's the same message, but this is a, a fuller version of it. Peace is an educated baby. Now, how are you going to educate it? Well, um, in terms of um, various... I don't know, disciplines and practices. Probably something like Gestalt therapy goes some of the way into this, which is a, you know, a Western therapeutic practice. People who really know what they're doing with the Gurdjieff work will do this kind of thing, but 90% of the people who are running Gurdjieff groups haven't got a clue what they're doing. They will just load your baby with more things it has to do and make it more unhappy, and you'll become less peaceful inside. Most of the people running Gurdjieff groups have just read the books. <laughs> you know, or maybe they've been to a lecture somewhere. You know, I was privileged to have known somebody who knew Gurdjieff, so I got a bit of an inside track on it all. Um, anything else? Well, to be honest, any of the real traditions, the problem is that all of the traditions become corrupted and serve the needs of the people who run the traditions. So it's, it is in the interest of the church to tell you that you're a bad person. The baby doesn't want to hear that. The baby just wants to understand why it's feeling like it's feeling. So those are some of the options. The other option, and um, it always embarrasses me a little bit to say what uh, the people I'm doing, sorry, people I know are doing. But there's something called a sound practice, which is sense, observe, understand. That will educate your baby. And I'll put a link to the philosophy workshop um, channel below. And if you really want to educate your baby down deep, and all there is offer, or all there is on offer here, is work. <laughs> this requires work on the part of your conscious mind. Then go to the Patreon channel because there it's deep. <laughs> it's as deep as I want to go anyway. So there are two things that I can offer, the sound practice and the Patreon channel. Um, simply with the aim of educating your baby. And remember, an educated baby is a happy and peaceful baby. And that's exactly what you want.